Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters my name is sister B and welcome to Islamic audio bites Ramadan has now gone and god willing we can carry over the same level of worship for the coming year in preparation of the next Ramadan Eid Mubarak everybody hope everybody had a lovely day i thought i'd do something a little bit different for this episode and will be reciting poetry from a number of websites that we have permission to read from. A disclaimer, right at the outset, I am not a spoken word artist and there is no way I can do justice to these amazing poems. Let's read. So, the first poem is from Dr. Mashurif Hussain's website from the Masnavi of Jalaluddin Rumi about Ramadan. Hidden sweetness lies in an empty stomach. Man is like a lute, not more, not less. When the lute's stomach is full, it cannot lament, whether high or low. When your head and stomach burn with fasting, the fire draws lamentation from your breast. The fire will burn thousands of veils each time you ascend a thousand degrees. On the way and in your ambition, Keep your stomach empty. Lament like a flute. Tell God your need. Keep your stomach empty. Speak of the mysteries like the reed. When the stomach is full, it calls Satan to you. Instead of the intellect, an idol. Instead of the gaba, the devil. When you fast, qualities of character gather round you like servants, slaves and followers. Continue your fasting, for it's Solomon's seal. Don't give the seal to the devil. Don't disrupt your kingdom. So on the Kalamullah website, I have come across If My Lord Asks Me. A man once came to Imam Ahl sunnah Ahmed bin Hanbal, and asked him, O oh, Imam, what is your opinion on poetry? He replied, which poetry is this? To which the man responded by reciting the following couplets. If my Lord asks me, have you no shyness in disobeying me? You conceal your sins from my creation and with sins you come to me. Imam Ahmad took these lines and repeated them over and over again and wept profusely to such an extent that one of his students said that he almost perished due to him crying so much. If my Lord asks me, have you shyness in disobeying me? You conceal your sins from my creation and with sins you come to me. So how will I answer? O oh, woe to me, and who shall protect me? I keep averting my soul with thoughts of hope from time to time, and I forget what is to come after death and what is to come after I am shrouded as if I am guaranteed life eternally, and that death will not come to me. And when the severe stupor of death overtakes me, who will protect me? I looked at the faces, is there not from amongst them who will ransom me? I will be asked regarding what I have prepared in my life to save me on the day of judgment. Then how will I answer after I have neglected my religion? Woe to me! Did I not hear the speech of Allah inviting me? Did I not hear what came in the chapters of Qaf and Yasin? Did I not hear about the day of gathering, the day of assemble, and the day of judgment? Did I not hear the crier of death inviting me, calling me? So, O oh my Lord, a slave, turning to you, I have repented. So who then shall shelter me, except a Lord? extensive in forgiveness to the truth he will guide me i have come to you in repentance so have mercy on me and make heavy my scales with good deeds and lighten my account you are the best of who will bring me to account so the next poem who is muhammad peace be upon him 
written by Bawa, who we found on the backtojannah.com website. What a year was 570 AD. A person was born, a prophet to be. Muhammad, that was his name. People were misguided, and that's when he came. He would go on to leave all the idols behind. He is an example to the whole of mankind. Rabi al-Awwal, in it was a day, he came to this world to show us the way. He was born in Makkah, the holiest place, a life full of challenges he was to face. Abdullah, his father, had by then passed away, leaving Amina, his mother, in her arms he lay. Halima Sadia took over his care, until he was six, our prophet was there. His mother then died, he was left all alone. Abdul Mutalib, his granddad, then made him his own. When our prophet was nine, his grandfather died. Abu Talib, his uncle, became his new guide. In his twenties, a merchant, Muhammad became by trade. Al-Amin, the trustworthy, became his grade. Khatija, age forty, became his bride. He was twenty-five with her, by his side. To the poor, she gave away all her wealth, a dedicated wife in sickness and health. Three sixty idols in the Gaaba there were at that time. Our prophet realised that this was a crime. He would go to Mount Hira, leaving behind his wife, reflecting and wondering about the meaning of life. Whilst thinking there, in the midst of the night, he heard a loud voice which filled him with fright. It was the angel Jibreel who asked him to read. Our prophet couldn't and didn't take heed. The angel embraced him, then asked him later, Read, read in the name of the Creator, who created man from a drop of blood. Our prophet couldn't read, but at that time he could. Our prophet rushed to the path straight ahead. He heard a voice from the heavens which said, Muhammad, truly you are the messenger of God. Muhammad was scared and thought this quite odd. Praise be to God, his wife said instead. I know you've been chosen as God's messenger, she said. And thus Khadija became the first woman of Islam, and over the next 23 years came the revelation, the Qur'an. He preached to all people, every creed, every race, yet so many hardships he had to face. There were fears for his life, then the hijrah took place. He entered Medina by the Almighty's grace. He was greeted by the Ansaris, who were not like the others, they treated the Mohajirs like their very own brothers. Then came the battles, fought face to face. Then came the conquest of Makkah, Muhammad's birthplace. A Nasr was revealed. His message was clear. Muhammad knew that his time was near. Everyone gathered to hear his last speech. Little did they know how far Allah's message would reach. Muhammad gave us the miracle, the Qur'an, and now a quarter of the world follow Islam. He is our role model, the best of mankind, and has left the Qur'an and his sunnah behind. Read the Qur'an as much as you can, the words of Allah for the guidance of man, and follow our Prophet sunnah when eating and dressing, and send him salutations and many a blessing. He came to mankind to show us the way, and inshallah will meet him one day. So another short poem from the same website, Back to Jannah, authored by Samina Farouk, The Four Quls Surah Meditations. Kafirun, O disbelievers, listen, O you, I don't worship what you do, nor are you worshippers of what I worship. Since you will never, why should I flip? So for you is your religion, for me is mine, between you and me there's a fine line. Ikhlas, he is Allah, he is one, every other God we are to shun. He is self-sufficient, free of need, we are dependent, to him we plead. He neither begets, nor is born, he never sleeps, nor feels worn. Nor is there to him any equivalent, neither idols, nor the prophets he sent. Falak. I seek refuge of the Lord of daybreak, when through the night light outbreaks. From the evil of what is created by him, 
I seek refuge from everything grim, from evil of darkness when it settles, hiding the evil as it battles, from the evil of blowers in knots, black magic of all evil plots, from evil of an envier when he envies, from blame, calumny, backbite and tease. Nas, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, their master and God, only one of his kind, from evil of the retreating, whispering one, into their chest the whispers done. They may be from humans or jinns, no matter the form, don't let them win. Another poem from the same site, it is labelled heart-touching poem about the care of Allah towards us. Oh Allah, I told you I'm in pain. You said, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. I told you, nobody knows what's in my heart. You said, verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. I told you, many people hurt me. You said, so pardon them and ask forgiveness for them. I told you, I feel I'm alone. You said, we are closer to him than his jugular vein. I told you, my sins are so many. You said, and who can forgive sins except Allah? I told you, do not leave me. You said, so remember me, and I will remember you. I told you, I am facing a lot of difficulties in life. You said, and whoever fears Allah will make for him a way out. I told you, O Lord, I need hope. You said, indeed, with hardship will be ease. I told you, I have many dreams. You said, call upon me, I will respond to you. So our final poem is from the Islam.net website by an unknown author titled Towards Unity. I can't escape, it's everywhere I go, in the news, in the paper, in all that I know, from state to state, shore to shore, plague to the heart, down to the core. Undivided and conquered, we're all torn apart. This is coming from inside, straight from my heart. This is all I'm thinking, day and night. We seem to think we're always right. When I go to the masjid, I don't know who's leading. Who's sitting by my side, I don't know who's praying. Do I give salam? Do I bother to care? I looked at him. All I got was a stare. At the end of the day, there's one way to go. There's one way to see and one way to show. As bright as the sun, vast as the sea. To be one unit, one family. Flow of a river, one current. The walk of a march, one movement. O oh, brother or sister, I see you, you see me. Together in one cause, one final destiny. Together we rise, together we fall. Hands together forever, standing tall. I once had a dream, it seemed so real. Changed the way I thought, the way I feel. I saw a brother. I never met before. We arrived at the masjid. He opened the door. He gave me salam and hugged me like a brother. It made me tear like none other. What was wrong? He asked of me. His kindness made me so happy. His word stayed with me for so long, running in my head on and on. We're all equal to Allah. Five times a day we pray salah. From him we came. To him we shall return. To unify should be our only concern. A single stick will break so easily, but a bundle of sticks will never be. At the end of the day, there's one way to go. There's one way to see, one way to show. As bright as the sun, vast as the sea. To be one unit, one family. Flow of a river, one current. The walk of a march, one movement. O oh, brother or sister, I see you, you see me, together in one cause, one final destiny. Together we rise, together we fall, hands together forever, standing tall. What was in my dream, I wish was true, a world where no differences between me and you. Foot to foot, in a straight line we pray, forgive our egos that get in the way. Piety and humbleness, we need to learn, 
and let our arrogance just let it burn. Take a look around, shake a hand, spread the salam to every man. As small as a smile, it can be charity. The best are small deeds made consistently. I plead with you all, forgive me. Let's try to live, to live in unity. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. Please do leave your feedback and reviews, be it on Facebook, Instagram, and also on the podcast platform that you're listening on, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or any other. It really does help with the project going forward. The links to do so are on the episode details. Look forward to hearing from you. Once again, Eid Mubarak. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum.